Hey everybody, um, someone uh, recently asked me a question about um, JKI's uh, Stargoat, um, how they created a um, basically no code GUI that you can just go and update kind of on the fly. Um, so you can insert different um, user interfaces um, into their compiled system without having to rebuild the application. Um, and you know, disclaimer, I don't work for JKI and I don't necessarily know exactly how they implemented this. Um, I believe this is how they did it, um, but this is a way that you can do it if you're interested in creating something similar. Um, there definitely could be other ways to do this as well. Um, but yeah, basically a way that you can have a compiled application that can load a GUI on the fly. So I'm just going to show initially this uh, no code controller. So, um, and you know, it doesn't have to look like this. This is just to help highlight how you can do this. Um, so I have this uh, control here so you can load a basically your no code GUI. So um, you, this way you can just create any VI that you want. Um, just add the con you know controls indicators, you know lay it out however you want it to look. Um, and then uh, yeah, we'll uh, select the VI here. Um, and then from here you can specify the name of a control and you can set the value of that control and then hit set and it will update it and we can see it update over on the screen over here. So, um, yeah, let's take a little look at that. So, really not too much to it, right? When we select a VI to load, we're just using this open VI reference to pull a reference to that VI. Um, we're removing, if there's anything already in this sub-panel, we're going to just pull it out and then clear the error because sometimes there's not anything in there. So, um, right, we're just going to try to remove it every time and clear the error. And then we're going to insert this new reference into our sub-panel. Um, and um, when we click set, we're just going to open a reference to that VI and we're going to use this control value set method just with an invoke node, pass in the control name and the control value. And just so, so you can see this value is purple, it's actually a variant. So I've passed in a like a double floating point. You can pass in anything into this. So depending on the type of control, you'll pass in different things, right? So if you have a string control, you can pass in, you know, strings. If you've got some sort of comp complex cluster or something, you can, you know, insert that. Uh, you know, if you've got arrays or, you know, whatever it is, you can pass that in directly. The variant will support any data type. Um, but yeah, that would basically be it. So um, I've got this. Uh, code um, and I created just a simple what I called no code GUI so I've just got uh, this GUI I just laid you know some uh, stuff on it um, and as you can see there's actually no code in the block diagram and this it's important as well that you make sure that there's no code in the block diagram um, so um, I mean if you add code in here right it's not going to be able to uh, be loaded if you know different things are missing in the compiled application so yeah um, just drop everything you want onto the front panel and just leave it as is um, and yeah so I built a build spec um, and just so you can see um, I didn't actually add my no code GUI um, so if you go to source files, you can see I added the no-code controller, but the no-code GUI is not added to always included. So it doesn't need to be added to the always included. Um, yeah, so now I've already built this application. So here's my no-code controller. Let's go run it. Um, there we go. Sweet. Um, so I'm going to pick a VI to load. Um, let's select our no code GUI. So you'll see the GUI pops up just fine. Um, so we can see that GUI we created. And from there, I can write the value of different gauges or different you know controls indicators. So in this case, I just added a numeric one so I can write different numerics. Um, it doesn't have to be like that, right? Um, you can do any data type. Um, whoops. Oh, there's a space there. Yeah, so you do have to get the name right. Sweet, you can see that gauge updates. You know, I can update any of these. And right now, right, I'm manually updating these. It does not have to be like that either, right? Your code, 
you could be pulling data from data acquisition hardware or from different instruments and then taking that value and using writing that to these controls as well. So that works just the same. But yeah, so that way you can write all these different things. You also can get the properties of these different things as well. So if I want to read the value of this gauge, I can also read that back programmatically as well. Um, so yeah, there's kind of that um, and just wanted to show. I'm just gonna, you know, build one other uh, really quick GUI and let's try swapping to it. Um, so yeah, let's maybe just do a graph and a string and let's save this guy. Um, so let's call this another GUI. Sweet. So we've got a new VI. Let's go switch to that one. So there's our new GUI. Sweet. So, um, and I can do the same thing and we can switch between as many different VIs as we want. We don't have to actually build any functionality into these GUIs. We're just dropping stuff. We can place it how we want. We can organize things how we want. But then we basically just uh, use uh, references to the VI to read and write control data. Um, so kind of cool. Like graphs, right? I can write to graphs. I can write to anything really, right? Um, so I can write, you know, a whole bunch of different values to this graph. Um, yeah, but like I said, that data could be coming from data acquisition hardware. It could be coming from all sorts of different things. Um, so yeah, like I said, I don't actually know that that's how JKI did that on Stargoat, but I'm pretty sure that's how they did it. Um, if anyone else has any other ideas on ways you can create no code interfaces, um, feel free to let me know. Um, but yeah, that would be one way in which you can create a no code interface. So you can have this be fully compiled and built application, but you can create user interfaces on the fly. And then you just need a way to map the data in your application to the specific controls and indicators. So some sort of config page or something, but that way you can have a no code GUI that you know customers or engineers or whoever wants to, right, can just customize and edit on the fly and you don't need to rebuild the entire application every time you do that. Just maybe link stuff to the new controls. So really kind of cool. Um, but yeah, thank you guys for watching. Canon Controls is your gateway to mastering LabVIEW. Dive into programming for data acquisition, industrial communications, and manufacturing automation. Explore how to enhance your projects with cybersecurity best practices. Join the journey to elevate your skills and secure your systems with every episode.